Today's the day that I finally make good on my promise from seven months ago to put something in this room behind me. But first, I gotta make it a tiny bit bigger. As every project for me tends to go, I've immediately run into a problem. Mobs keep spawning in and attacking me while I slowly try to expand this room. You see, being the lazy individual that I am, I have come to the conclusion that I cannot possibly be bothered to place and break torches as I go, so I came up with a far simpler solution. I'm gonna make a mob switch. Despite the fact that I absolutely abhor these villagers, necessity is the boomerang that always brings me back. And similar to the end dimension in the last episode, the mob switch here is going to be zombified villagers as well, because, well, I don't want to deal with shulkers. I just need him to get into the minecart so I can get him over to his new home, which he's sure to love. I'm definitely going to need more of these guys, so let me just cart them over. Huh? <laughs> I'd forgotten the beds. Uh, time to move the rest. And after a brief amount of waiting around, the adults have made some babies. Good job, guys. Now let me just name this cat. And this dog I've had sitting in this corner for ages. Say hello to the internet, Cerberus. You, you dog, you. They should be functioning perfectly fine. The only way to know for certain is to flick the lever and see if the mobs get shoved from the right side to the left side. Here goes nothing. Ooh. That was very satisfying. Since no mobs have spawned in, I'm gonna have to write this down as a W. This shouldn't take too terribly long as I'm only making this room a tiny bit bigger. So I have given up already. Well, just on using netherite tools. I really don't want to have to stop to repair them all the time, so I'm just going to sacrifice some diamonds to the time-lapse gods. May they ever have mercy on my soul. Please move. No? Okay.
wasn't so incredibly tiny, I'd call this good enough. So let's mine out the floor and make it a teeny bit bigger. I mined out a little ring around the outside of this here room that I can fill with water to make a water skirt type thing. It'll stop explosions so that I can blast mine the rest of this neatly. I'm definitely not going to mine it all out by hand because despite being a masochist when it comes to this game, I'm not an idiot. Okay, so maybe I'm a tiny bit of an idiot because I made this weird contraption to mine with and it's fun, but also it's it's really stupid. The first test was a resounding success, so now it's time to blow up the rest of this place while collecting all the precious deep slate for future builds, which, if you wanna see, you could always subscribe. If for some really odd reason you want to watch me dig the entire hole in real time and not as a time lapse, you can watch all my previous hole digging live streams on my channel. If you're interested in watching the future projects as they unfold, make sure to tune into the daily live streams. But for right now, I'm going to uh, skip building something here and make an item sorter because I have just the worst chess monster ever. So let's dig another hole. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. That's too damn bad. You keep digging! I've decided to build Gangle's Grand Multi-Item Sorter for my main storage because it has a mix of bulk storage, multi-item sorting, along with the unstackable sorting, so it's exactly what I'm looking for. Now I just need to see if I have enough resources, starting with quartz. And that's all I have. Hopefully that's enough. I'm in desperate need of a lot of chests for this system, so I AFK'd by the bees for a while so that I could get a lot of honey blocks. Now, you may be thinking, hey man, how, how does honey turn into chess? Well, dear viewer, tree farm.
This dual core spruce tree farm is an Il Mango design and has been my favorite tree farm for the past couple of years. And I believe this is the fifth time that I've built it. Anyways, it makes about 36,000 logs per hour, so I shouldn't have to run it for very long to get all of the chests that I need for the multi-item sorter. After a few short hours of AFKing, I have managed to burn through all of the bone meal that I own, and now I have an excessive number of logs. Sadly, this isn't all that I need for this build, as I still need some iron from the iron farm. I need to turn the mob switch off temporarily in order to use the raid farm for more redstone. Dropping the render distance down low makes it a lot easier to find these banner boys. And I'll just AFK here for a bit. Surprisingly, I need just a massive amount of jack-o'-lanterns, so I set up a temporary farm. And after looking through the materials list, yeah, I definitely didn't have enough quartz. These comparators are very expensive. So I was just placing all of the quartz down so I could mine it with fortune, and Cerberus just showed up out of nowhere. He's such a good boy. Change of plans. No longer building Gangle's Grand Multi-Item Sorter because I'm building Gangle's Grand Multi-Item Sorter version 2. Thankfully, Gangle's and Rapscallion popped into my stream just before I was about to start building to let me know that they just released the newer version literally an hour ago. So yeah, that could have been really frustrating. But also, do I even need an item sorter? I mean, just look at how organized I am. Now I have tested the system out and it works perfectly fine, however, 
In order to make this system fully operational, I do need to Noah's Ark this thing and get two of every single stackable item. I was just flying around looking for things and these guys are back. Why do they do this to me? I've decided to use obsidian blocks as the filters for this system for two reasons. They're pretty useless, and I have over a million of them. Not only must I get two of everything, but I also have to organize it in some intelligent way like this. All of these items are going to be stored in the same chest, so organization here is very important for organization in the long run. Thankfully, Cerberus is here to keep me company because this is going to be the most stressful part by far. It is kind of satisfying to climb on top of a giant pile of redstone components and have some idea of what the hell is going on. In case you were wondering what happened to all the deep slate blocks I blew up, I stored them all over here, and right now I need all of these ores. It is a truly sad day when I must destroy these really pretty ore blocks to make the super ugly diamond blocks. And one slice is getting all of the ore blocks, and another is getting all of the processed ores. Whoops, uh, there you go. The one upside to how slow this is, is that I already have most of the blocks in the game. I just have to find out where the hell I put them. I apparently didn't have like any of the nether plants, so let me just fix that real quick. I hate Bastion so much. And then we set the filters. Perfect. One thing that I underestimated is how annoying it is to collect every single copper block. Why? Why are there like a thousand of these things? I should really make a wool farm because standing here like this for two hours makes me feel like an idiot. And just like that, all the wool blocks are accounted for. I have to go back to the end because I think I left the coral there. Nope. Nope. Yep. While I'm out here, I need to snag all the purple blocks, but more importantly, dragon heads. And you can't go wrong with a backup elytra. I may as well grab this achievement. I'll take that and that. I kinda don't wanna cover up these components with decorations because it just looks super awesome. It's giving me the early 90s see-through Game Boy aesthetic. Yes, I did have to kill all of the corals to get the dead variants, and yes, it did make me quite sad. Just running some of the items that can be sorted right now through the system, and I must say it's very satisfying to watch this thing in action. Since I have to collect all the stackable food, I thought I may as well take some time to relax and catch some fish. It is weird that you can see the salmon and they will never bite the hook. Oh, a fishing rod. Holy sh- Never waste your time enchanting a fishing rod, kids. You can just catch them. Unless there is a crazy fishing update, that should be the only time I ever fish in this world. Here's a more time consuming one, if my math is right. I need to get 92 ancient debris so I can have two netherite blocks, two lodestones, two netherite ingots, two netherite scrap, and of course, the two ancient debris, just so I can add those for filters to the sorter. It shouldn't take too long. And to address this, since I was asked the last time I went ancient debris mining, I do have a texture pack that makes the ancient debris blocks pink. Makes it a little bit easier to see. That should be enough. Let's make a rare item section, which still needs Nautilus shells. Oh man, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, and one more for good measure. Despite having like 20 backup beacons, I didn't actually have any leftover nether stars, so it's time to grab a couple. There we go, and you can keep my extra skull. Since I'm in 1.18.1 still, the best way to get enchanted golden apples is by looking for desert pyramids. That's the first one. That's the second, but I don't really feel like looking for any more. And now it's time for all the rest of the colorful blocks, which includes all of the candles, even though I like to always forget about them. Now I can finally sort pretty much all of the items. While the system is running, I've finally come up with an interesting decoration idea for this hole in the middle of the sorter. That should look nice, but also still let me look into it to see the redstone. It's looking good so far, but it'd look better if it was more like this. Well, at least I won't fall into the middle anymore. Also, the squid's names are Inky and Blinky, in case you're wondering. Also, if you're curious as to how I'm using invisible item frames in survival, I have a data pack where all I have to do is rename item frames to invis in an anvil and... 
It gives me invisible item frames. I'll leave a link to it down in the description because it is very useful. This section over here is the unstackable sorter and it definitely needs a floor. Or what would be even more interesting, I think, would be to have a glass floor and make something interesting underneath of it so I can gaze down into it when I'm feeling melancholic. Maybe a bit of a time jump, but I've essentially finished making the room under the floor. However, I do want to put a blue axolotl down here, so I've basically done nothing so far. Let's go try and breed one. Axolotls are definitely the worst mob in the entire game to breed. It would be a lot easier if they didn't require live fish. What is this idiot doing? Oh, he's gonna get me. Oh, he's definitely gonna get me. So I gave up already. Well, let me clarify. I gave up on swimming in the ocean to catch tropical fish because my little slime arms got tired. And also it was really slow. So instead I've decided to make a little setup here in this lush cave biome, which should be a lot more efficient. It's working beautifully. The odds of getting a blue axolotl are 1 in 1200, which is better than getting a shiny Pokemon, but will still probably take a while. Hopefully I can get one in under a thousand. The breeding is going perfectly fine, although I have been at this a little while. I have some sad news, and please don't hate me for this, but I have to reduce the axolotl population. As you can hear, the sound engine seems incapable of keeping up with all the noises these guys are trying to make, which is why you can't even hear them get hit properly most of the time. Currently I'm at around 600 axolotls, so I'm going to reduce that to around 200 and continue breeding from there. Hey kids! Kids, it's dinner time. I got your favorite uh, tropical fish. I had the <laughs> I had the biggest brain idea of my life, and uh, what the heck is going on? So I had the biggest brain idea of my life. I was just getting stressed out that I couldn't see the blue axolotls, maybe losing them amongst the sea of their brethren. So I made it. I can't see any of them unless they are blue. I went to college for six years. How are there already so many of you? Is this a lot? It seems like a lot. Let's see if there are any baby axolotls suffering from infant methemoglobinemia. Hmm. Nope. Well, then it's time to die. The drama seems to be really toned down when the sound doesn't work. Why aren't any of you blue? I've bred around 2,000 of them, uh, so that's a good start, I guess. I have to say that feeding them while they're invisible is really weird, but also kind of fun, because you just keep getting pushed around. Aw, your population is so high, the sound stopped working again. That's <laughs> so cute. 3,000 bred, and this number's a little too high. <laughs> my best. Taking the sanity from my eyes i'm losing my mind <gasps> oh, he actually exists now i just gotta i just gotta grab him Ooh. i'm gonna name him mew i need to breed several extras so i don't have to do this again in case mew dies which with my luck, is it's it's probably gonna happen. But now I'm finally finished with my floor design. I hope you guys like it down here. You should be safe and cozy. Now on to the thing that I've been putting off for quite a while. I have something that I want to build in the middle of this room, so I need to move this whole rainbow back away. It should be pretty quick. I mean, it's not like it took me a whole episode just to make it in the first place.
as you can see, I am missing some of the materials I need for the design of the floor of the main chamber, so I'm gonna have to go gather those. I really should make a nether tree farm. I should also make a wool farm because, well, I, I feel like an idiot for doing this all manually again. So in third person, it is kind of a fun little mini game for testing your coordination. And now that all the materials are collected, I just need to break some bedrock and construct the swirly twirly vortex. And now that it's finally done, I can jump into the void and bring a beautiful end to this series. Here goes nothing. So the reason why I covered the void with black concrete is because, well, it normally looks black. But if you go high enough up into the world and look down, it becomes white, which is really strange. And I just wanted to keep it dark in the middle. So yeah, there's also this weird optical illusion if you go high enough up. So that happens now to add a little more decoration to the sorter i'm thinking of adding in a custom cave with plants and trees etc hopefully it looks somewhat all right it's kind of a hit or miss when i build something one thing you may not know and i didn't know is that the non-full blocks don't stop beacon beams so you can just make some really interesting designs if if i could possibly muster up the creativity for example i can make little custom cave entrances like this which show off the beacon beams instead of just hiding all of them in a wall i finished designing the rough outline of the cave which will make it a lot easier to add plants and other decorative blocks too instead of trying to design all aspects of this tunnel all at the exact same time just got to replace some stone with some moss sprinkle in some dirt add in some custom trees add in some mood lighting add in some texture to the walls throw some plants in to add variety maybe a tall drip leaf to act like a custom vine looking good maybe throw in a small campsite at the cave entrance to make it look a little friendly and that's pretty much all it takes to make a custom cave also follow me on twitter i need more of a presence there so i can do collabs with other people please and thanks i greatly appreciate it I see you there enjoying this video. If you want to see the next project, then make sure to like the video. It's it's free and it helps a lot. And if at least five, f four, four people smash that subscribe button, I'll make an episode eight to this series. Hopefully before next year. No promises, though. Uh, come to the live streams. So, I'm once again plagued by unexpected animal death in this game. Apparently, the axolotls crawl under azalea bushes. I would say they permanently get stuck there, but the death they experience when they dry out seems to release them from their suffering. And problem solved. This game really does have it out to get me. Mentioning segues, I still need to gather some mob heads for the item sorter. So I went out, designed a mob sorter and a mob head farm, and attached them to Il Mango's dispenserless mob farm. So, yeah. Segways.
Oh look, we're going to see the only good use of a trident. I do have to stand around aimlessly waiting for a thunderstorm, but at least when one shows up, I get these fancy buttons to choose what mobs I want in the blast chamber. Oh boy, do I love being AFK. Okay, I got some lightning, so I need to do this as fast as I can. Give me a creeper and a zombie. Charge him. Now I just need to blow him up and hide. Oh, <laughs> that was close. I shouldn't have closed these doors though. That's, uh, that's not smart. But anyways, let's do that some more. Oh, let's see why my creepers aren't showing up. Oh, are you serious, Enderman? And the lightning part of the storm is over already, uh, sadly. I do want a few more mob heads, so I'm going to have to wait around for another uh, five, ten hours, I guess. I'm going for an even bigger brain strategy this time. Instead of charging creepers one at a time during the storm, I'm going to just name tag a bunch of them up here, charge them all at once, and then blow them up one at a time in the future. This is a clearly superior decision, but sadly my feeble mind didn't initially grasp it, or I could have saved a few, uh, I would say hours, but it's been days at this point. I mean, uh, I can only squeeze so much juice out of this melon. I've decided to name them all Dinnerbone because, well, I, I think it's funny when they're upside down. Definitely easier than trying to speedrun mob heads during the thunderstorm while being attacked by phantoms. And it also has the added bonus of keeping all the charge creepers spawned in when I leave, so I don't have to farm all the mob heads at once. Of course, with a touch of editing, I can speedrun these anyways. I think my favorite part is watching all the charge creepers move to the lower holding cell. It's just, uh, it's really satisfying. Why is he jumping around so much? Well, I suppose this is a good stopping point. One thing that I want to do quickly before I end this episode is transform the nether portal because I haven't really seen anyone actually do that in hardcore. I've seen quite a few people using the stacked glass fog method to make a pseudo nether portal, which is interesting and all, but I want to actually transform the nether portal, which means I get to finally dip my toes into update suppression. <laughs> In case you are interested in how update suppression works, there's a very good video by XCOM explaining all of it in detail. The main gist of it is that all of these rails are budded, and since the game can only handle so many updates at once, the game fails to properly update the block that you break because of all the updates to all the rails. If that makes sense to you, great. If it doesn't, 
I'm sorry. Please watch the XCOM video. As everyone knows, a nether portal needs to be linked, so this one here also needs a 1980s teen movie makeover. Another thing you can do with update suppression is block duplication like this. And instead of having one netherite block, I have two netherite blocks. So I'm going to duplicate a couple of these for the decoration around the pether nordal. Don't, don't worry. I won't be using any of them to make weapons or tools for myself because I find that to be incredibly boring, but I personally think it's fine if they're just for decoration. So that's what I'm doing. Anyways, let's transform this thing. Update suppression is a really fun mechanic, and I'm sad that it's patched out in 119, but there's another thing that I wanted to make using this mechanic's block duplication before updating, and that's a Betherite Neekin. Also, I dupe some spore blossoms because, well, they make everything look better. There's no renewable way to farm them, and spending days and days exploring caves and loading more of the world just to get these things is really not that fun. If you guys have any ideas for a fun way to make these renewable, please let me know down in the comments. I might just add a mod or data pack to add that in. And either way, leaving comments is free. The interactivity helps the video get more impressions, so thanks for leaving them. <laughs> Also gotta add the mob heads in before I forget. I just want to give a huge shout out to all the patrons and channel members whose support makes this all possible. I hope you liked the video, it was a lovely way to spend around 1400 Minecraft days. And hopefully the next one comes out this year. Uh, we'll see. Subscribe!